Hello and welcome to the channel and uh, today's find is a Craftsman lawnmower. Uh, it has a Honda GCV 160, not too bad. Uh, there are a few issues with it. Um, we're going to dig into it and see if we can't get this thing running. Uh, so let's uh, get into it, let's get involved. So here we have this Craftsman uh, lawn mower and uh, does have some issues. Not going to lie to you, does have some issues here. Uh, somebody made kind of like this shoot flapper uh, for the grass to shoot out here. Just a piece of plastic, so something must have happened there. Uh, we do have a broken wheel. And you can see the the wheel there is coming off and it is bald so I'm probably going to need new tire there and maybe on the other side depending on how the gears are. Now this is a uh, self-propelling lawnmower and it appears like the belt is in decent shape from here. Uh, whether the gearbox is okay or not is yet to be seen. Uh, we do have some other issues uh, like when I pull it I don't know if you can hear I hear that. So what we have is a blade down there that's hitting something. Uh, could be the um, deck, the bottom of the deck might have a bend in it. We'll have to look at that. But I think the first thing we're going to get to here is just to see if it's going to run before we put any more time into the mechanical stuff. Uh, in terms of the drive and uh, other things we're going to look at uh, getting this thing running first so let's get into that and uh, first I think what we're going to do is remove the recoil here because I'm, it's not working very smoothly it's not pulling the wire back so hopefully the uh, the spring mechanism and everything in there is okay but uh, we'll remove it and, uh, and see what we got underneath. getting there that's the easiest thing to get off here Alright, so we were able to get the uh, top portion of this off, which the tank comes off with it. It's going to be three posts that were we had to work here, the three screws. What I think I'm going to do now is since the tank's 
going to have to be cleaned, I would assume, anyway. It's a good, good thing to check it all out, make sure it's clean. We're going to remove this clip from the gas line here, and I do have a container to catch any, any fuel. And I'm just going to turn the line as I work it outward. And just be prepared to catch any fuel that's going to be coming out of here. Not the easiest thing to get off of here. It's probably been a while since it's been off, but we're going to work it out off of this shutoff here. Try to pinch it a little bit as well so that we can minimize the spillage of gas in here. Typically, this would be something I'd do outside, but it's cold outside and uh, we're expecting some snow. So, as long as I'm careful with this gas here. Alright, we've got that unhooked. I'm just going to carry this over to this container here. See if I can't pour it out. There really isn't much in there. Not too bad. So we have our recoil there. I think what we're going to do is just put some uh, silicone in there for now. I can see it's probably been sitting outside. Things aren't moving freely enough. So I did unhook the handle. Uh, there's this mounted to the handle here with the, the pull rope. So I can remove this. Set that right there. And I'm going to get some silicone and kind of, I don't want to go crazy with it, but get in there and see if we can't uh, free this up a little bit. feeling better already. You can see how it's, it's coming back, it's returning nicely. I'd like to remove this tank really entirely just to make sure I don't want any gas leaking all over the place. I think I got most of it. There was only a little bit in there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So we'll let that sit for a minute. Now keep working in some of that uh, silicone. Three in one oil probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, but we'll do that and we'll let it sit and keep pulling on it and uh, we'll move on to the next step here. Alright so our recoil, uh, I've wiped all the plastic down in the tank and that's drying and I've set that aside so I think the next thing I'm going to do is check the spark plug here. We'll remove the spark plug because one of the first things I'd like to do is put the recoil back on and give it some turns and we'll see if it's producing some spark. So let's take a look at the spark plug.
so it's pretty black it's pretty black there but we can clean that up um, we'll just simply just take a wire brush to that and uh, so I think I'll do that now I'll just clean it up real quick alright so we've cleaned up the spark plug looks a lot better uh, in this case I'm not going to make it perfect I'll clean it up as much as I can I'm used a wire brush you know a little bit of this QD elect whatever you have laying around this is QD electrical cleaner obviously brake cleaner will work uh, anything just to get any crud off of it and so that looks pretty good so we'll just stick that in there for now I'm gonna leave it loose because I'm gonna be testing that we're gonna ground it to the uh, to here and we're gonna pull it there's a couple things that we're gonna need to do first and I know, did notice that that it's not the tightest connection there to the spark plug so I'm just kind of taking some pliers and trying to squeeze the uh, the metal inside of there just so it fits a little tighter on the end of that spark plug yeah that's definitely better could probably be a little better than that so we'll tighten it up just a little bit more I'm just squeezing the uh, metal inside of there together so it's a little bit tighter. Yeah, that's better. Now it's actually clicking in there. That's what you want. It was a little bit loose before. So as I'm looking in here, there's another acorn. You can see there's a, there was a bunch of acorns that fell out of the bottom of this. It's pretty funny. It was like a slot machine. There were just acorns just falling out from the bottom. So I gave a brief cleaning here to the coil. And that's all set. I think what I'm going to do since the... Uh, when I'm pulling this, there's something hitting on the bottom. I think the blade is hitting on the... There's a bent part of the deck underneath. I don't think it's anything too serious, but... Uh, definitely don't want to crank it over with the rope with that hitting down there so since I'm usually go through and sharpen the blades anyway and clean the bottom of the deck off I think I'm gonna remove that blade down there first because we don't obviously don't need that to get the engine running and then we'll we'll take it from there and see if we have some spark we'll check out the uh, air filter and the carburetor and uh, if all goes well we can get this thing running now I'm gonna look at the oil here And the oil is definitely f filthy. I don't know if you can see that. The oil's definitely filthy, so that'll have to be changed as well. But for now, we're just going to go through some preliminary things just to make sure it's worth continuing. Even though I'm probably going to need one wheel at least on this. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is tilt this thing over and we'll get at that blade. That should be fun. That should be fun trying to remove that. Hopefully it's not uh, too hard. But let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so the bolt we're dealing with here is a 916 right here. I'm going to try to hold the uh, blade. I'm wearing some gloves. I'm going to try to hold the blade. Sometimes you have to uh, lodge something in here, a piece of wood. Uh, but I'll try this first. See if we can. Well, that was easier than I thought. It came right off. So the blade doesn't look that bad. It actually looks like it's might have been purchased uh, 
in the last few years. 21 inch Craftsman blade. Yeah, we can clean that up nice on the uh, on the grinder, sharpen it up, but there's not a lot of rust on it. So we'll put that aside there. Overall, the bottom of the deck isn't horrible. All right, well, let's tip this back on the surface here. Here, compression that's a good thing so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to check the spark so I'm going to put this uh, top cover back on so we can pull the rope and we'll check for the spark right there all right so we're reassembling our pull rope recoil here And, uh, turn it over a few times. Of course, it's not going to start. There's no gas hooked up or anything. I'm just going to check for the spark. So. spark now. So I'll turn this around and get the camera facing the uh, spark plug and we'll see what we can do with that. Alright so I have the handle clamped down. Uh, of course that's the only way it's going to start because it completes the, uh, the circuit that's like the kill on the handle. So I've got that engaged. I'm going to pop the rope a few times here and see if we see any spark. I don't know if you can see that. It is sparkling. So that's good news. It is sparking. The uh, recoil is working well, much better. So I guess the next step is we're going to check out the uh, the air cleaner and see how that looks. All right, so we're going to take a look at this air cleaner. And that definitely doesn't look great. see if we're gonna to have to replace that for sure but we can uh, clean it temporarily we'll run without it just to see if it's gonna run now that could be oil because it was overfilled or just lack of cleaning it over time it doesn't feel oily um, I think I'll just give that a quick wipe down there I will remove the carburetor. At some point. But I'm just eager to see if this thing's going to run. So I might put a little bit of gas in it and, see, and just see if it runs. 
I'm not going to fix something that isn't broken, and then I'll go from there. Here's the choke here. But I usually go through uh, everything, every detail of it. You know, if it was a little warmer out and I could be outside and it was summertime, it'd be a lot, a lot better. It's not too bad today. We are expecting a snowstorm at some point, and it's getting colder as the day goes on. So I think we'll just leave that off. And I might hook this, go ahead and hook this fuel line up. Maybe put a little gas in here and see if we can't get this thing running. See if it runs at all. It does have spark. It seems to have compression. The oil isn't the greatest in the world. Uh, we're definitely going to change that. But uh, I think I'm going to hook this fuel line back up, put a tiny bit of gas in there, and, uh, and see if we can't get this uh, GCV160 running again. All right, this could go good or this could go bad. I'm not going to put too much in there. Just enough to kind of hopefully get it running. Should probably clean that cap off a little bit. fuel in there. So we're going to move on to the next step and uh, I guess we'll put on this, uh, we'll turn on the uh, fuel valve here. And that actually might have been on and that's off. Well, we're going to find out in a minute. Oh, it doesn't look good. It's probably an issue with the... Uh, carburetor from sitting so we're definitely going to be this going to be our next step so we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the carburetor and clean that up not always easy so we're gonna get to the carburetor next alright so we'll go ahead and remove this carburetor it looks like a 10 millimeter so you got these two bolts here we'll take that one I could also just put fuel in the uh, where the spark plug goes to see if it would run. So the longer screw up goes on the left side. And I believe we have to remove this here. Alright, 
I'm missing another one here. I didn't see that one on the bottom. So there's three there. carburetor which is definitely dirty we don't want to lose the gaskets there's one of them everything together. Yeah, definitely doesn't look like the cleanest thing in the world here. Try to carefully get this gasket off without ripping it. Just as easy as possible. Definitely looks neglected. So we're going to take off this uh, the gas line here. Hopefully, it won't make too much of a mess. These clips aren't the easiest things to get off. I've worked on other mowers and they, the clips come right off. These ones are a little bit different. Then I'm just going to twist the uh, hose. turning this carburetor here while also being mindful of those linkages here which I'm gonna have to take off this probably hasn't been cleaned ever there but it's long enough where I think I think I might be able to to still use that It'll just be a little bit shorter unhook these linkages now. You basically want to turn the carburetor. Get the spring off there. And then get the, this other one off. Yeah, I'm 
open that. So I'm hoping I can get that hose long enough to just cut the end of it when it's all cleaned up here. So there we have the carburetor. Alright, so we have this Honda GVC or GCV 160. Honda GCV 160. We have the carburetor uh, removed here. And I did clean off the outside of the carburetor a little bit. It still has some gunk on it. But what we're going to do is open up this float bowl here. This is a 10 millimeter socket. You don't want to force it off. Not too bad. I do see some crud in there though for sure. You can see the crud. There is some crud in there. So you don't want to lose this washer here either. For the bolt that goes on the bottom. So we'll set that aside there. So here's the float. We can remove the pin. We'll remove the pin here. Set that aside. We'll take the float and the needle off here. There's the needle. Float looks alright. So we'll set those aside. So what we're definitely going to want to do here and the seal looks pretty good in there. We're going to take out this jet and the emulsion tube from the center here. So I'm going to have to get a thin screwdriver. Alright, so let's recap what we've done here. Uh, we've removed the carburetor. And the carburetor is here. And you can see how much cleaner the carburetor is. Now there is inside there a main jet that we're going to remove and clean, uh, but it uh, makes no sense cleaning the inside if the outside's filthy. So this looks in pretty good shape now. You know, I just blew it out with some carb cleaner and cleaned it all up. Uh, we have the float bowl here, which we cleaned up. We have the float, the uh, needle, and the pin that goes in there in the bolt. I also cleaned up this uh, air cleaner housing, so that looks like new, and we have some gaskets here, and a thin screwdriver, which we're going to need to uh, remove that jet, and that's what we're going to do now, and we have some wire, you know, you can use a, you know, any kind of really thin wire that's going to fit in the holes of the jets, and we're going to do that now and uh, hopefully we'll put it back together and maybe this thing will fire up. So uh, let's move on to the step of removing the jet and, uh, and examining it and cleaning it. Alright, so we have our carburetor here and we're going to have to remove the jet and these are brass fittings so you don't want to get too crazy when you tighten them back up but once they're loose you might have to tap this uh, just tap this here and they should fall out which they did so we have our emulsion tube here and we have a small jet that goes on top of that uh, let me get a little closer here to this I don't know if you can see that. So 
what we're going to do is just take some wire and there's a bunch of holes in there. I'm going to try this manual focus, see if I can't get in a little bit better. Just take this uh, wire and poke it through the holes. Make sure they're free. You should also see you know because I have this cardboard and it's a white background or even outside you should see light through those holes but you just want to go around and poke through the holes just like that make sure it's all clean and then our carburetor it's good to blow it blow it out I've already done all that if you have a compressor that's even better uh, to blow it all out make sure the all the passages are clear and then we have this jet here which will poke through and just make sure that it's clear and that looks good so I think what we'll do now is we'll put this back together and this longer side here is going to go in first just drop it in there and then the jet with the threads will go on top and that's when we'll use this thin screwdriver and just tighten it but you don't want to over tighten this because it is brass and uh, aluminum here. You don't got to get crazy so it, that's snug, that's good. So now we're going to put our float and the needle is just going to kind of sit. It's going to sit on there and we'll drop it in. not always going to cooperate but we'll have to do that again float looks good sometimes you'll have a float where there'll be fuel inside of it so it wouldn't be any good so you got to I think just tilting it to one side helps keep that needle in place. Then we'll stick our pin. Of our pin, and get that in there. If it doesn't work one side, you can always try the other side. Just lining it up. There we go. That's good there. Looks good. And basically with the float upward, if you blow through this hole here, there shouldn't be any, you shouldn't get any air. And that's good, it's sealed up. Now if you drop the ball and blow through it, that would be that there, that's your gas, where the gas is going in. So the float and everything and the needle's working properly, so that's good. Alright, so we put the bowl back on, everything's nice and clean. Um, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and put it back on the lawnmower. Now I'm not going to bore everyone with that, you're just going to do reverse of how it was taken off. Um, make sure the gaskets are put back on there, everything's tight. And then we'll try to fire this thing up and see if it, uh, if it starts or not. Alright, so I think the easiest thing, I wasn't going to show this, but since it can be fairly difficult to put on, you have this metal uh, bracket brace. Uh, what I did was put the gasket on and then put this one screw that holds the air box onto that uh, metal bracket first 
and then put my two screws in for the carburetor and that that will hold the gaskets if you can kind of look at it if you can see that there and that'll hold the gaskets in place and then you can just push the carburetor in there and we're going to attach this uh, breather hose here and uh, and then we're going to fix that gas line here. Hopefully there's enough space that I can just cut off that little piece that broke off. We'll just cut it straight and hopefully that'll be long enough to fit into the, the nipple here on the carburetor. So we're going to do that. I'm going to complete getting this together. I did put the linkages back on. It's not that hard. Uh, the first one in the hole is going to be the tension spring and the second one for the governor arm here. You can see the governor arm there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, you have this piece here that hits against this and uh, and that controls the choke for starting. So I'm going to piece this back together here and uh, we're getting closer and closer to finding out if this thing's going to run. So I'm excited about that. So let's do it. Alright, so we're getting it back together here. It's a little tricky. There's a plastic spacer that goes on there. And then there's the uh, kind of a protective uh, gaskety material shield that goes on. And then I think the best thing to do is just stack them all put all your gaskets on and put these two screws in and hold those screws in and once you get everything in there you can uh, push it forward and lock these bolts these two bolts in for the carburetor and also locking this one helps uh, keep this uh, plastic uh, air filter housing to this bracket and then there is a bolt here and then of course the spring which will reattach it reattaches on the bottom you'll see a little hole here below the screw a little tab where this uh, tensioner uh, for the governor arm will attach so I'm just gonna finish tightening these two bolts here and the other thing is just making sure this lever works so that when you put it in this choke position that you actually see the butterfly closing in there so that looks good too so I did fix the gas line there was enough uh, room on that line uh, to where I could just snip off the end and then I reattached it to the carburetor so overall we're almost ready to get this thing uh, a test here I'm excited about it we'll see what happens you know everything's cleaned up here um, the, the carburetor is definitely clean uh, so let's finish what we're doing here and then we'll give it some pulls, put some fresh gas in it and we'll see what happens. So overall the mower ran great. Uh, we just had to do some simple things to it. Uh, the carburetor was dirty. Uh, there is a cable here that controls the choke and also the uh, kill switch here which hooks to the handle which you can see is here. Now this was all, this looks like someone put a replacement on there so this was very hard to you know it was like rusty inside of the cable it was very hard to uh, pull so what I did was just take some uh, three-in-1 oil but you can take you know if you have WD-40 you can use that 
and with the WD-40 kind of just spray a little in that hole and every time just work the handle and just keep working and working the handle and eventually it did uh, run smoothly which is nice so we've alleviated that issue As you can see when I I'll kind of do the handle here and you can kind of see what it does So that basically has the brake on it uh, that stops uh, the motor from turning when you let go of the handle. And this also engages the kill switch which allows it to start. So, And I've also removed the rear wheels. And what I can do, the rear, the rear wheels are in really good shape. Uh, I think I'm going to clean this axle up and uh, put some oil or grease on there. And here we have the wheel right here they're in good shape there was a white plastic cover that went over one was missing but I think they look kind of nice black like that uh, the motor is in great condition I did some additional cleaning to it and it's very clean uh, I'm going to continue to to restore this and do different things as far as the front gears we have some issues with the front wheels uh, the gears here have some play in it probably the bearings there and the wheels themselves uh, were worn down and I'll show you those now alright so here's the wheel and you can see the inside uh, where the gear engages to it it's plastic and the other gear is metal well metal always wins over plastic it's basically ground down all the gears and this part of it was broken so we're definitely going to need uh, some new wheels. This is uh, bald here and the other wheel is good traction on it but the inside looks the same so we're going to have to do both of them. So what I can do is I can either put the money into replacing this transmission which doesn't seem to be working properly because when I turn this it should be turning those gears here and it's loose so I mean I could remove the gear entirely and just use the mower by pushing it you know that would make it lighter a little bit lighter by removing that you know if this part is a hundred and something dollars as a transmission uh, then it's probably not going to be worth it uh, but I think I'll go through and just clean it up a little more uh, maybe get some wheels for it and I'll take apart this transmission housing and see if there's what's going on in there but my guess is that the gear inside of there is you know also worn down a lot of these parts are plastic so they wear down and you know it's not going to be worth it then you're exceeding the uh, the worth of it although it is a you know it's a good running engine and the deck isn't bad either uh, the underside I'll detail that you know, if there's any painting that needs to be done I'll do that the blade looks like it was just purchased you know a few years ago uh, doesn't even have much wear on it at all I'm gonna put that on the grinder and the brush wheel and clean that up but overall uh, you know I'm gonna keep going with it maybe I'll do a video of uh, in the summertime of it actually cutting grass but uh, it's been a fun day, a fun time. If you like the video, hit like. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, about the basics of the engine, the small engine, and getting it to run again. Uh, a lot of the problems are going to be the carburetors, going to be fuel delivery issues. Uh, you know, I'll probably still go through and do a flushing of the gas tank and things like that. But uh, overall, good day. If you like the video, hit like. Hit subscribe if you like the channel and uh, we'll see you next time.